Good morning, Park City Community Church. Welcome to worship. We are so glad you are here today. If you've been enjoying these online services, tell a friend, spread the news. This week we're going to be starting a new sermon series called Behold the Beautiful. This year is half over. Can you believe it? I know that we've been reflecting a lot upon all the things we've missed, all of the things that we've had to go through while quarantined. I think maybe we can also reflect on a lot of the positive things that have happened while we've had more time to spend with our families, while we've reconnected with old friends, and just the beauty of today, the beauty of nature. So enjoy worship. Good morning, Park City Community Church. I'm Tom Brown, and I was one of the people who was a part of the discernment team last year that helped develop our vision and We Believe statements. Please join me in reading together our We Believes as our affirmation of faith as we begin our worship this morning. We believe all people are children of God. We believe God is for us, not against us. We believe in Jesus Christ, whose example of radical love we seek to follow. We believe in the Bible as the foundation for understanding God's love and grace. We believe in forgiveness. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, mending the broken, and caring for our environment. We believe our minds are great gifts from God. We are intellectually honest and curious in our faith discovery. We believe every life is a mix of joy and sorrow, and we need each other to celebrate and support those times. We believe faith is a journey, and we are accepted wherever we are. God's peace. I would like to invite you all now into a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the Church. Father, enliven the Church for its mission, that we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. I invite you to offer your own prayers silently or aloud now.
creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace, that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community. We pray especially for the people of Park City and Utah. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need. Again, I invite you to offer your own prayers silently or aloud at this time. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. And now, if you'll join me, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've now reached the point in worship where we have the opportunity to give as we are able. You see the give button on the side. At this time, while we say our prayer and listen to the music, we can prayerfully reflect upon our ability to give to keep the ministries of Park City Community Church and all of our community partners going. Thank you so very much for everything you've contributed during this difficult time. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and everyone's heart that you touch with your gifts. So now we'll bear up, bow our head in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this day of life, for eyes to see the sky, for ears to hear the birds, for feet to walk amidst the trees, for hands to pick the flowers from this earth, for a sense of smell to breathe in the sweet perfumes of nature for a mind to think about and appreciate the magic of everyday miracles, for a spirit to swell in joy at your mighty presence everywhere. Please accept these gifts today in appreciation of all of your gifts to us. Amen.
Good morning, Park City Community Church. This is Marcos Lopez. So happy to see everybody today coming from you today from beautiful Bryce Canyon, camping here. Um, I'm a member of the church. I was also the chair of the board for the last two years as we worked on the crafting of the We Believes that we're talking about today and I'm super excited. It holds a lot of personal grace um, with me because we worked very diligently on the We Believes to help define and provide a path for us, for our church to know who we are. And I can't tell you how uh, happy I am to be a part of Park City Community Church. And one of the main reasons was when I moved here to Park City four years ago, I wanted to find a church that accepted everyone. Um, LGBTQ, mental health issues, people from prior religions, other faiths. Um, that was the most important thing. Sorry, that was a little squirrel that just ran in my legs. Uh, that was the most important thing to me. And I hope that's important to you. Um, as we talk today about our We Believes for Park City Community Church, I think it's perfect timing with everything going on in the world. Also, because we're talking this week about how all people are children of God. I don't think there's anything more important and timely. I'm super excited about this week's reading, and uh, thank you for joining. Today's reading is John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that is only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? The way we know we've been transformed is that we love our brothers and sisters, all of God's children. Anyone who doesn't love and holds hate does not have God living in them. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. and We ought to live sacrificially for our brothers and sisters. If anyone sees a brother or sister in need and does not respond, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Amen. Good morning, Park City Community Church. So when do you feel closest to God? And where do you see the beauty of God at work? Wait, I can't hear your answers because you're already all off mountain biking or fly fishing or camping or hiking. So I guess that tells me how you would answer that question. Because around here, the answer to that question is easy, right? You all see the beauty of God in nature, right? We do outside in creation in this gorgeous setting that we are blessed to live in. Like where else do you get to go to church and hear the person read scripture to you from Bryce Canyon and have a squirrel run across their leg right in the middle, middle of it all? We love to get out in nature where God's beauty is both so majestic and yet feels so close at the same time. Um, Richard Pick, uh, one of our church members, has some wonderful photography from Bryce Canyon and Southern Utah. Uh, you look at the pictures of his landscape and the wildlife and it's just awe-inspiring. It can feel like it's just drawing you so close to God or those pictures can just feel like it's connecting you to all of life itself. Sometimes uh, we feel closest to God in our relationships, right? Spending time with the ones we love the most. Just ask any new parent or grandparent to tell you about the new little one in their life. And if you look at their face or their eyes, it'll tell you it all. That when they hold that new baby, the beauty of God couldn't be any more real or close than at that moment. Sometimes we feel closest to God in moments of quiet reflection and prayer and worship. Those intentional moments of pause and reflection that allow us to appreciate the beauty of life and faith and God. Sometimes we feel the beauty of God is revealed to us through helping other people 
when we're able to feel like we're um, contributing to something meaningful and being able to share and offer something of ourselves to the world. And sometimes even um, God's presence and beauty is finally felt in the midst of hardship when there is nothing left to do but turn toward God. And that can be a beautiful thing. And did you ever notice that some of the most inspiring and joyful people you might know are those that can appreciate beauty in all those circumstances and more importantly can affirm the beauty in all people and Jesus was one of those people Jesus's life and ministry was for the purpose of assigning worth and value not just to some but to all people as a scripture reading said See what great love the Creator has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Not just some of us, but all of us. And I hope you trust that good news of your divine worth, that you can see the beauty within yourself. And you can become then a valuable asset in God's work of redeeming a hurting world. That's part of why I love reading the gospel stories. Jesus travels to the margins of every family group, every race, every religion, to bring hope to those who have been told that their life doesn't count for much. And then he highlights it as valuable and worthy and beautiful. And he turns it into treasure in the kingdom of God. And I think what he's trying to get me to do and you to do is to value others the way he values us and other people. To love them in a way that they might know that they are children of God. To appreciate and affirm the beauty and sacred worth of all children of God. And if you listen to the rest of the scripture reading from 1 John that Marco shared with us, we get a few more cues about what that kind of love looks like. This is how we know what love looks like, the scripture says. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to live sacrificially for our brothers and sisters in need. Let us not love with words or speech alone, but with actions and in truth. Jesus never promises that this way of life will necessarily be easy, but he promises that a life committed to living sacrificially for others, as he does for us, and loving lavishly, as God does for us, and sharing compassion and value and sacred worth with people on the margins, that is the most fulfilling way to live, he says. Give yourself to others like this, and you will begin to see beauty in all kinds of unexpected people and places. And it's something you can do even while you're quarantined without waiting on the government or other agencies to fix all the problems or do it all for you. And that's why I've um, gone back and reread and appreciated the work of theologian and author Karen Armstrong's book, 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life. So it's Karen Armstrong. The book is 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life. She writes, in our perilously divided world, compassion is in our best interest. To acquire it, however, will demand an immense effort of mind and heart. Gandhi memorably said that we must ourselves become the change that we wish to see in the world. We cannot reasonably expect the leaders of our own or other people's nations 
to adopt more humane policies if we ourselves continue to live egotistically, unkindly, and greedily, and give free reign to unexamined prejudice. We cannot demand that our enemies become more tolerant and less violent if we make no effort to transcend the aggressions and selfless, selfishness in our own lives. We have a natural capacity for compassion as well as cruelty. We can either emphasize those aspects of our religious traditions that speak of hatred, exclusion, or suspicion, or with those that stress interdependence and equality of all human beings. The choice is ours. We learn compassion by looking at the world, seeking to grow in empathy and mindfulness, speaking kindly to one another, showing concern for everyone, and appreciating beauty in all. And here's the beautiful thing. You know people who do this. People actually live this way, not just in words or speech, but in actions and in truth. People who are committed to a more beautiful, compassionate, loving world based upon their faith in Jesus Christ as one who wants to see all people included as children of God's. So take a listen to one of your fellow friends in faith from church. When we moved to Park City and joined Park City Community Church, we were immediately drawn to the sense of family and the sense of community. Within our first year, I was headed to Kenya with a group from church. While there, I became fast friends with Gil Miller, and quite honestly, who couldn't be fast friends with Gil? Over the course of two weeks, Gil began to chip away at my newfound occupation of ski bum. And as a result of those great conversations, Gil led me to the National Ability Center. Since then, the National Ability Center has become a part of my life. I often tell people that we have two extended families, our Park City Community Church family and our NAC family. In four years of instructing, I've learned so much from our participants, perseverance, commitment, and most importantly, unconditional acceptance. Every day on the mountain brings a different experience. A veteran with PTSD, an eight-year-old with spina bifida, a child with autism. Each day, each lesson, each participant has brought and continues to bring new experiences of acceptance. I have seen God's beauty shine through every participant I've had the privilege to work with. And that led me to advocate for our first We Believe statement. We believe all people are children of God. In the Bible study method of Lexio Divina, our first reading draws us to a single word in the passage. Our first we believe statement draws me to the word all. At the NAC, all are welcome. At Park City Community Church, all are welcome and all are children of God. No asterisks, no buts, no exceptions. The church recently hosted a meeting about race, white privilege, and our roles in overcoming racial, social, and economic inequalities. Jane and I are blessed to have adult children who feel safe enough to have tough conversations with us about topics like racial inequality. It's not comfortable. It's not easy but we must engage each other and have honest conversations about moving our thoughts and actions from just not being racist to being anti-racist. God wants us to see the beauty in all of his creation. We can easily see the beauty of the mountains that surround us. And we are working towards the day when all of God's children feel valued, worthy, and loved for who they are, not just in his eyes, but in the eyes of all people. 
I'd like to leave you with a quote from the author C.S. Lewis. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. God's peace. I hope you heard his message there at the end as an invitation to start where you are. You don't have to be Jesus or Tom Brown. Good thing, because I think they both set the bar pretty high for us. But we all have a role in helping people feel like they were valued and cherished and of sacred worth and all children of God, no exceptions. And many of you continue to play a part in that here at the church and in our community. And I'm so thankful for that because it's making a difference in people's lives, like this person that we heard from this week. So let me read this letter to you. You don't know me, but I'm taking the guess that it might have been one of you who dropped off, or at least was involved in dropping off, the nice little treat bag on the doorway of my family's new rental home this week. I know the bag was meant for the people who lived here previously, so I wanted to reach out and let you know that the family no longer lives here. I also wanted to let you know how personally meaningful it was for me to see something from Park City Community Church left on my doorknob as we were moving into our new home. I will explain below. I was originally from California, but lived for close to 10 years in Boston before accepting a job here as a professor. We moved our family out here, me, my husband, and our two girls in 2018, and we bought a house in Provo. My husband kept his job in Boston and worked remotely from here the majority of the time. Provo has not been the easiest place for my family culturally, and so we've had our eye on moving somewhere else in the area. We moved into a rental home where we will be for the next several months until our new home is being finished. Although I've grown up as LDS and still value that faith and its people in so many ways, I have felt more distant from my church in recent years, especially due to some of the policy decisions that have been made around things that I value, such as LGBTQ plus rights and women's issues. When I knew we were going to be moving, I started looking for a church where I might sometimes attend and be involved in the community. One where I could feel happiness about God's love and be reminded more of my desire to model my life after Jesus Christ. I visited a lot of websites and churches, but I have really been drawn to Park City Community Church. I found that PCC's belief statements and value of inclusiveness really align with who I am. I've been listening to Pastor Tracy's sermons since February and have found them to be especially comforting to me and my family in this time of the pandemic. In any case, I know it's probably unusual for someone in my circumstances to reach out and say how much I appreciate your church, but I wanted to do that. I hope I can have some in-person in, in involvement in your community whenever social distancing is allowed. Again, I so appreciate seeing the treat bag this week. I really appreciate feeling the love of God that is exemplified through your faith community. And I wanted you to know that. So when do I feel close to God? Where do I see the beauty of God at work? For me, it's not so much in nature as it is in being with all of you who are committed to a more beautiful, compassionate, loving world based upon our faith in Jesus Christ as one who wants to see all people included as children of God.